Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sam Robbins. Now these days, most people are aware of gluten and how it can be bad for your health. Of course, not everyone is gluten intolerant, but many people are. Now what's interesting is that lots of people who go on a gluten-free diet do see and feel an improvement in their health, but it's minor. And the reason for this is that gluten is actually a mild form of a lectin. And thus, the real problems are lectins. And that's what today's topic is going to be about. So getting rid of gluten from your diet for better health is a nice start, but your real goal should be to reduce or eliminate lectins from your diet. And just like gluten, not everyone has lectin intolerance. However, many people do. And if you have any form of digestive problems or inflammation or autoimmune disease, or you're just trying to lose weight, then make sure you watch today's video because I'll quickly discuss what lectins are, why they're bad for you, how to avoid them, and what you can and should eat for better health, fitness, and longevity. And I'll keep it short and simplify it all for you. But first, let's start with a personal history with lectins. Now, I've known about lectins for over 25 years, and the reason I've been so knowledgeable about it is mainly through indirect reasons, primarily because of my involvement with professional Olympic athletes. You see, over the decades, I discovered that when people ate certain lectin-rich foods that were high in lectin, they looked and actually felt worse. Slowly, they actually lost muscle. They gained fat. They felt tired. They had more aches and pains, and even their brain and cognition suffered as well. Except 25 years ago, I and most experts didn't know the specific reason was due to lectins back then. We just knew to avoid specific foods that made us just look and feel older. And these just happened to be foods high in lectins. Okay, so let's first start as to what lectins are. Now, a lectin is a type of protein that forces carbs to clump together and attach to certain cells in your body when you eat them. Now, they're found in lots of different foods, seeds, uh, grains, vegetables, and the skin of certain vegetables and fruits. It's actually a defense mechanism of the plant or vegetable. Basically, if, if you eat that vegetable, for example, you'll get sick and you won't eat that food again, right? It's a defense mechanism, and that's a simple overview. Also, not all lectins are toxic, and again, not all people are lectin intolerant, as I stated earlier. Now, why are lectins bad for you? On the surface, lectins can cause pain or physical discomfort, such as gas, diarrhea, bloating, or leaky gut, and other digestive problems. However, things can actually get worse. You see, lectins, which are also sometimes called uh, sticky proteins, get in the way of communication between cells. Now, when that happens, the body responses is usually inflammation or some other type of reaction to toxicity, like nausea, diarrhea, or vomiting. Also, a break in cellular communication can result in symptoms like fatigue or forgetfulness. So if you have any brain fog, that's another big reason. Additionally, lectins can cause you to gain weight, and this is a big problem. And this is really frustrating part for most people because the foods we think that are healthy for us also happen to be high in lectins. And if you are intolerant, then you'll have all of these negative side effects, including weight gain. Okay, so what foods are high in lectins? So here are some of the typical foods that are high in lectins. Grains, whether it's a wheat or quinoa, wheat germ, rice and oats. Uh, nightshades. Nightshades are basically tomatoes, eggplants, potatoes, goji berries, and peppers. Now these are okay if you peel the skin and de-seed them, remove the seeds. Soy is bad for you, peanuts, beans, lima, red kidney, uh, split peas, lentils, but they're okay if you use a pressure cooker to cook them. Uh, various seeds and dairies. Of course, now you're probably thinking that you can't eat anything, right? Now, this only really pertains, again, if you happen to have a high intolerance to lectins. If you don't do well with gluten, you for sure won't do well with lectins. And if you want to have grains, okay, go ahead. Rice is best. And if you, again, want to have beans, just cook them in a pressure cooker. It makes them okay. It removes the lectin. Okay, so what foods should we eat? What foods have don't have the lectins? Of course, you know, there's lots of foods that you should eat, such as pasture-raised, grass-fed meats and eggs, wild-caught, low-mercury seafoods to salmon, anchovies, haddock, or saw, sardines, and trout. Also, fermented vegetables, such as kimchi and sauerkraut. Fruits, especially berries, are really good for you. Dark, leafy vegetables are great. Pressure-cooked legumes, as I said, and good fats olive oil, avocados, co uh, coconut, flax seeds, macadamia, and so forth. Your goal should be to try and avoid the lectin foods and eat 
the non-lectin foods most of the time, all right? I'm not here to tell you to never eat this food or to always eat that kind of food, all right? If you want to go and have some food that's high in lectins that quote-unquote isn't good for you, then go ahead. And you know what? Enjoy the meal. Treat yourself. And if you don't feel good afterwards or have some type of digestive problem, just know that the next time, you know, don't, don't eat that kind of food and then go back to eating regular healthier foods. Now, there's one, something really important I want you to understand, especially when it comes to weight loss. And it all really comes down to your genetics and hormones. All right. Obviously, you can't change your genetics, but you can control your hormones with your lifestyle and your thoughts. All right. Now, many people are always trying to lose weight and can't and blame it on their genetics. Yes, genetics does play a big role in everything. However, the foods you eat or don't eat can turn on or off the thousands of genetic triggers you have in your body. For example, if you happen to be lectin intolerant and you eat foods that you think are healthy for you on a regular basis, but they are high in lectins, and that's what we learned today, then they will trigger your fat gaining genetics to turn on. Now, what you want to do is the opposite. You want to turn on your fat burning hormones and one simple way is to be mindful of today's information of what to eat what to avoid however if you want more details on how you can turn on your fat burning genes and hormones while also speeding up your metabolism like when you're younger then you can click the link below in the description area and watch the next video in it you'll also discover why 93 percent of diet and exercise programs fail and how it's probably not your fault do me a favor and please leave your comments and questions below and make sure you visit the link below in the description area to watch the next video on how you can actually turn on your fat burning hormones and increase your metabolism. As always, thanks for listening and have a happy and healthy day.